hello hello everybody and welcome back to Dauntless it's been a while but I am finally back again with the showcase of one of my oldest and most beloved builds the natural 20 or short d20 full crit build an old classic but before we get into the stuff let me have a few things to say here um, if you don't want to hear it you can skip it I will put a timestamp in the description where you also can find a the link to our guild discord although it is a German only guild but maybe you just want to come by and say hello I would appreciate it and you can also find the link to the Dauntless Builder there so yeah check it out anyway so it's been a long long time now it is almost a year and I actually made this uh, this uh, special guide always uh, already in German for my 100 subscriber special so you can see that there's a huge gap so what happened well I can tell you what happened depression kicked in really really hard you see over the course of the last 10 months I lost a lot of beloved beings and it really took me down and I just couldn't find the time or the motivation either or um, to just yeah come back to get into uh, streaming and showcasing my stuff I already just do this as a hobby as you can see I'm not a professional at all I'm just doing this because yeah I, I have fun at my builds and maybe others like it too and yeah anyway yada 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 I I took long time to get halfway back on track I'm not even back on track yet I'm just floating on the water stable trying to not drown but life can hit you hard and it's not easy to get back on the horse if you know what I mean so yeah First, at around Christmas, my female cat died, and about five months later, her brother followed. They got old, though they got 15 and 16 years old. That's not that's not the highest maximum a cat can reach, but still good age. But it still was it was hard to overcome that loss. And also, there were other things with uh, people that teared me down and now I try to get back on track and this is my first try this is my first step so welcome back hope you missed me and yeah now let's go into this English version for the 100 subscriber special which <laughs> already lies months back anyway yeah let's get into it now so what I bring you today is um, just as I said my all-time favorite pike build it has a long backstory all the way back to old Ramsgate before the reforge update when there were still half-life builds formerly named the speed crit build because it it just accumulated a crit chance and attack speed um, and it was even showcased by another German YouTuber who was a guild member of the at the time. Um, yeah, but then the Reforge update came and the build became a discipline one. Then the attack speed got capped, so discipline was nerfed twice and I just got kicked out of the game. Nice, thank you. I should have jumped there. I should have jumped there. Ah, Rusty. Oh my god, I'm rusty. Look at me rusting. <laughs> anyway, yeah, attack speed got capped, discipline got nerfed twice, and so I switched the build's focus from speed and crit to just full crit. Um, what do I mean by that? Um, let me explain. So, 
This build is a classic. It is pre-impulse. So it is not that full build anymore because now you have a a very very huge impact on the uh, crit mechanics in this game with impulse and it doesn't get used in this build so if you're looking for an impulse build um, just just you just need to wait a little longer I have made one or you could go to just the meta streamers and youtubers and take one of theirs impulse builds are great they deal tons and tons of damage Although they don't prioritize the same things as I do. Just as my channel description says, I'm focusing on casual friendliness and... Let's get a call, a nice calm corner here again. It's a nice calm corner. Yeah, you know me, I prioritize on a good balance of handling, surviving and damage dealing. Okay, so... Well, yeah, then I switched to a full crit, except well, discipline, because it's not user friendly enough for what it's worth. At least not in this build. But that doesn't weaken us here. The build stays powerful easily without discipline, due to its free elemental variants. It's also very strong when combined with another. So if you have a couple of friends to play with, uh, give this one a shot. Trust me, you don't regret it. You will not regret it. Um. Don't, but don't you worry, this is not a group build as the Frost God were. You can play it solo, it can easily look after you. Anyhow, every variation brings his own advantage. That'll be damage, control and support. Means Chronovore, Malcarion and Urska. Let me show you in detail and explain. So, the... The basic structure of the build is everything except the weapon. We will ignore the weapon for now. I will explain the three different um, elemental weapons here in detail after the basics. The basics is we have an Iceborne Omnicell to just give us a little bit more life so we can make advantage of um, Tenacious and we also have defense and life gain. We have also the Scarn Lantern with Catalyst and this is important because you need the, the this little amount of shield it is kept to 600 shields by now so that's still 12% crit chance with galvanize which we have in the build catalyst of course is a must have we will have the uh, skull forge with tough because uh, more healing and more health and the skull forge will give us a endurance shield so we can just spam heavy attacks which is one of the core parts of the builds, uh, of this build, I mean. Uh, but I will get to the tactic later on, after the build showcase. Then we have the Thrax armor with one of the three crit cells. And, is, and it is important that I mention that here, because this will change. This cell will change. It will be one of the three critical cells. So either cunning or pulse or galvanized depending on what weapon you choose. So keep that in mind, this will have a crit cell, but it is um, alterating. Um, the next thing we have is the Gloves of Boreos with Tenacious, so we, so we have that covered. And last but not least, we have the Chronovore Boots with Galvanized. This is fixed, so this will always be Galvanized, because you just need to switch around two cells, one is in the weapon and one is in the armor. In the chest plate, I mean. And we take the Chronovores here over the um, over the Frax boots because we will play with Resikiri Bond, so we don't need uh, six cunning in our armor slots. And also, we want to have a little elemental resistance balance. So, as you can see, we have here fire resistance, but weakness against cold. And we balance it out with a cold resistance weakness against fire, and the same goes with light and dark, a uh, light and shadow. Uh, the potions will always stay the same. They are important, like crazy. You need the attack speed. You want to have it capped. You want to have the extra base damage because if you have no base damage, you have nothing to crit for, and you want to have the ether rush because you want to spam your lantern. You want to have your 600 shield up 
as often as you can. So in total we get a, a skill value of 6 cunning, 6 catalyst, 6 pulse, 6 galvanized and 6 fanacious. Uh, rounded up by 3 molten and 3 tough. The molten is a little nice utility coming from the skull forge. Um, it will give us a little bit of attack and movement speed and it will shield us against um, fire damage. So Hellion is a pest, not anymore with this. Now, what is the thing with the three weapons that I was talking about? We have at the first version the um, the, 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 the all-time favorite of Chrono War. Chrono War gives us um, the Chrono ability, of course, which uh, revives us or shields us. You can use this tactically or for survivability. And we have the following bond, the Resakiri bond. So that's, uh, that gives us a 12% chance of a double hit. So that is 40 PS. Because if you hit twice and both hits crit, yeah, you just dealt f four times the base damage. If you hit twice and just one of them crit, well, it's still three times the base damage. And if it doesn't crit at all, it's still double damage. So basically a crit, right? Um, special and mod will always be the same. We will have the crit aura, the uh, wellspring. Don't know what the first word is right now. And we ha will have the Munitions Amplifier. So our Crit Aura, which is crucial to have activated most of the times, will have more power. Uh, cells in this one, I got Pulse and Catalyst. Catalyst will always be there. No matter which of the three uh, pikes you will use, Catalyst will always be one of the cell slots. And the second, is just like in the breastplate an altering crit cell depending on what bond you take so this is pulse for the chrono pike now if we switch to the next one the malcarian pike we just do the good old switcheroo in taking the cunning cell into this slot let me just quickly find it there it is catalyst as i said is fixed and we have Savit as a bond and we have the same outcome of stuff again. Now what does Makarian give us? Makarian gives us uh, control and mobility because you have the teleport attack from Makarian and you get the shock proc. This will give you another control element adding two normal staggers. And your 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 party will probably like. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, last but not least, I'm sorry for this break. Last but not least, we do have Urska. Urska is the utility-based version. We play it with this one, the the the, the Frostwolf Pike. So again, we will have Catalyst as a sure thing. And then we need to look. I am now missing cunning and pulse and I have free galvanized too much. So I just go here, uh, throw out the galvanized, put in for example the pulse and do the last but not least cunning in the weapon. Put it in the weapon, not do it in the weapon. I'm sorry for my bad English. I'm rusty just as I said. So Urska we have Again, the same outload, uh, loadout, outload. <laughs> we have the same loadout. Um, Urska gives us an easy interrupt with its shield that it can um, just position right in front of you, you know the thing. Uh, but what it does is it gives you 600 additional shield. And not only for you, but for your group if they are close by the Frostwolf Gazer. So that means another 12% thanks to Galvanize on crit chance. So while this is the highest amount of crit chance that you can get on the build, let me just let me just sum that up. We have 10% crit chance from cunning. Plus 30% crit damage. Then we have 
Um, every fifth hit is a sure crit from Pulse. Another 15% crit damage, that makes 45. So we have 10% for now, plus another pseudo 20% as I like to call it, because it's sure, it's fixed, it's not a chance. But yeah, so 20% is already covered of your hits. And from the 80%, I don't know, it's 8% then? I don't know, I, I, I'm not a mathematician. Let's just go to the next one, the last one is galvanized which gives us 1% crit chance per 50 shield with this version we get 1200 shield that equals 24% additional crit chance and also 15% additional crit damage again bringing us up to 60 but yeah all in all we now have 36% crit chance only in the build on top of that though comes 30% plus whatever munitions amplifier do I don't know if munitions amplifier just uh, expands the time I don't think so or just expands the crit chance which I do believe is true so this is not 30% extra this is 37.5% extra now let's just uh, count these two together so we have 36 plus 37 this is 73% crit chance plus pulls so you can be sure that you crit most of your hits like you are covered dude you are covered and I can show you that but I will not play with Urska actually uh, let me play with the chrono version because I want to do double hits and I want to tactically use the chrono ability just to showcase that off. And now I'm missing Galvanized and Cunning. Cunning comes naturally via the Resakiri Bond, so I just put a Galvanized in here and link the weapon. And we are back on the right loadout. And now let me tell you about the tactics. The tactics is... Uh, they are rather simple. They are rather simple. It's just about the start, how you initiate a fight. So what you normally do if you want to play this build optimized you take your potions in a safe distance like 70 80 meters away or whatever it is if it shows you food and sorry I don't know before you activate it let's just keep it that simple yeah before the behemoth is activated you have to take your potions you also want to start your lantern of course all the time every time you get the chance to you do that now you start with this the the, 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 the the pike run thing whatever it's called it is called uh, let me think I don't know how it's called um, where you the the move where you run around hold light attack and just hit something because you do wound damage with that this wound damage will be important as soon as you get the uh, beam is staggered because make sure that you hit something that you can hit easily when the behemoth lies on the ground because you will put a wound in that thing you will put a, put a wound in that thing to get ether rush so what you do next after you hit it after you uh, ap uh, approach the, the behemoth you instantly switch to heavy attacks you want to stagger that thing make sure to get a munition here and there and when it is staggered, you put the wound in. Then you have Ether Rush, you have your crits going, and everything just comes together and you can just erase the behemoth. Let me show you that. I'm level 20 right now, so there's just one island really apart from Blazeworks that I can show this. So it is the Twilight's Refuge. Let me show you how this works. Uh, as soon as we found something, of course. If you want to see the full gameplay video, um, you, can, you can go to the German version, which is over an hour or about an hour long. Uh, you, can, uh, you can watch us there using all three versions together in one group. 
and do let and can watch us do trials, place works, and heroic escalation as always. But for now, let me give you a quick taste of its power. Okay, let's start. Woo! And so, so we're here. We landed, and we already almost drowned. That's not a good start. So what do we have here? I will not pick the shroud because it's elemental advantage. Let me just pick something neutral here. So the 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 thunder deep drask it is. Thunder deep drask is rather close to the edge, so he will activate really really soon, sadly. Okay, so we run to him. Pick the head or whatever. And I already got hit, but he already got staggered. Now we take the wound. And the wound is in, and we just erase it. That's it, he's done for. And you, do you see all these exclamation marks? These are all crits. And he's gone. Uh, well, that was not clean. Keep in mind, this was not a clean start, not a clean fight at all. We got hit once. And we obliterated uh, it. Let me just repeat that. We obliterated it. So that's how easy it goes. Let's see what we still have here. Let's let's take the shroud, show you the elemental advantage. So we have one third of the potion still going. We have an ammunition. And let's go. I hit the head, that was a mistake. Because I don't like to wound the hit uh, wound the head here. Wound is in. And now he flees. This is also not clean. Let me just quickly take new pots. This is also an element that you should keep in mind. You should always have your pots running. It is funny that this thing, which is actually vulnerable to our element, made us more trouble than the, the Thunderleaf Trask. Okay, let's quickly get a third one, because why not? So maybe we can see the resistance to fire thanks to Molten. Okay, try to get the wing. Wasn't the wing. Now you don't have to play this optimize though. That's one of the good good parts. You can just screw up and do whatever. But I want it. I want it now. That was a part break. I want the wound. There it is. Let's make us safe against attacks. And by the time that we have everything set up, he's already almost dead. Now he pushed me. That was not friendly. And he pushed me again. Good thing I don't care about getting pushed, because I'm a casual bird. That means I survive. And there we go. Let us quickly take a second look at the build. You do have the Iceborne Omnicell, the Scum Lantern um, with Catalyst, the Skull Forge with Tough, 
the Frax armor with whatever crit cell is needed to complete the build. The Boreas gloves with Tenacious. And last but not least, the Chrono Boots with Galvanized. Uh, oh my god, I forgot the name. <laughs> I got a blackout, I forgot the names. This is Aether Drive. And what the hell are these potions named? I forgot the names of the potions. The Attack Speed and the Damage Potion. Okay, the Frenzy. Frenzy and what was the third one? told you, I'm rusty. I'm so rusty, I forgot the names of these potions. It's the green, the red, and the blue. There you go. You will always need to have 6 cunning, 6 catalyst, 6 pulls, um, 6 galvanized, and 6 tenacious. And round it up with 3 molten and 3 tough. And you will either play it with chrono pike, with Resakiri bond, malcarion pike with savit bond, or urska pike with frostwolf bond. Your special will be Wellspring, Savage Wellspring, there was it, and the Munitions Amplifier. That is the build. There you go, have fun with it, take a couple friends and combine all three versions for its maximum potential. And I see you in the next video. Bye! Where's the where's the exit button? I found it.